train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about getting stronger. Now there are people debating all the time about what is the best thing for bodybuilding, what's the best thing you should concentrate on. Other people are just, let's just say they're low intelligence or something, I don't know what it is, but they're always like, Jason, there's only this one principle that matters for everyone, because everybody's the same. And obviously, I talk about it all the time on this channel, not everybody is exactly the same. I know that there's certain people out there that they refuse to look at reality in front of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, they see a tree, they see a car, they see a camera, they see a rock, and they say it's all the same. Well, you know what? It's not all the same. I mean, we know that not everybody's the same, and it doesn't matter how much you identify with something other than what you are. It doesn't change reality. It doesn't change the laws of reality that are shown before you, you know? Unless, of course, well, there might be exceptions to that even. There might even be exceptions. I mean, I think there was one person I know of. Well, I'll explain it right here. Now, I guess there are certain exceptions. I mean, sometimes people maybe can become something other than what they are. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're a different organism. I mean, I mean, there was a great story that was in the 80s. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever watched this, but there was a great story in the 80s about an organism who became a great boxer. His name was Rocky. So that example, you know, push that example aside, okay? Just let's take that out of the whole, whole box here, you know, where, you know, a rock transformed itself into a boxer. We could honestly say that there are different principles that apply to you at different times in your training. And sometimes a beginner will notice certain things. And beginners always do this. They always notice certain things that work for them. And then they say, okay, this is perpetually gonna work for me for the next three decades. And I'm gonna tell you right now that it's not the laws of physics that change, but there's certain weak links in your body that develop over time that you need to address in order to get to the next level, which is why plateaus exist. A lot of times there's a weak link. It's not just, just genetics, although sometimes genetics are there. Sometimes your body does have a limit to what it can produce muscle and strength wise, but there are also the weak links that develop over time where you just can't get any further. Like for instance, you're driving a fast car and then the engine is too powerful for the transmission. Then the transmission blows, you know, and then you need to upgrade the transmission and then therefore you can go faster. You know, you can switch gears and stuff and not worry about blowing out the, the rear end of your car, right? So it's the same thing with bodybuilding. There are different weak links. And I'm not just talking about from the rehabilitation physiotherapy thing. Sometimes it's about hitting a muscle in a different way or using a different exercise or whatever in order to get some additional strength in that area, which adds synergistically to an overall strength of development. So that said, title of the video, does strength matter? Yes, strength matters. Progressive overload is an extremely important thing for natural bodybuilders to gain muscle. But the one thing you will notice is that when you're getting stronger in the bench press or you're getting stronger in the squat or whatever, you're going to be developing a certain way. Your body is going to develop certain muscles in a certain way and you're going to notice that from a bodybuilding standpoint, perhaps it's not developing the way that you think would be best for overall symmetry or maybe the look of the body, or perhaps you have some sort of recruitment pattern that is causing you to over recruit some muscles and, and develop weak links in others, right? So we see this all the time. Like I remember I was in a bar when I was like 20 years old and there's this guy, just, he was really skinny, but he could bench press more than I could. And I was like, oh geez, that's weird. So the guy had a really refined nervous system, but he had the arms of a pipe cleaner. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> So his arms were like pipe cleaners, but he could bench press a lot of weight and his chest was okay developed, but it wasn't more developed than mine was at the time. So strength contributes, but it's not the whole thing. And as far as not strength, just with the compounds, if strength was enough, my strong masculinity would be enough for me to become huge. Huh? Hey. You need to develop strength and strength endurance in the isolation movements as well as the compounds in order to develop a balanced physique. And yeah, 
like I said before, sometimes your body will throw curveballs at you. Like, you know, me having a dislocating shoulder and a, and a torn rotator cuff over here from hockey and stuff. That has changed the recruitment pattern of my muscles also from before. So I've always trained exactly the same as I train now, always, except for the fact that I have to now concentrate more on isolating certain areas because those areas don't necessarily get hit doing the compounds the way they used to. You know, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes life will throw you curveballs where you are forced to get stronger, but maybe in different lifts than you were strong in before in order to stimulate those muscles that are lagging behind or those muscles that are just not getting recruited like they used to. So progressive overload is extremely important. You do want to gain strength because when you gain strength, now you're going to be able to rep out with higher amounts of weight. So even if you gain strength in the 10 rep range or the 12 rep range or the 15 rep range or the eight rep range, these rep ranges are still a sign of strength. If you're able to do 100 pounds more for eight reps than you were before, that's a lot more strength, right? There's a little bit of endurance in there, but not much, but there's a little bit of endurance and that still is progressive overload to a point, right? The big mistake a lot of people make is that they think progressive overload is only applicable to one rep sets. Like my maximum press for one rep is this and now it's that. That means I've gained in strength. Well, that's the dangerous way of going about it. I mean, if strength is all that mattered, you know, then Jedi's would be huge. Like Jedi's would be massive bodybuilders, you know what I'm saying? Rise, rock, rise from the ground. Rise! Or Harry Potter. Harry Potter would have been massive, but Harry Potter was a tiny puke. Leviosa! Leviosa! Rocka Leviosa! It's really true, rocks are stubborn. The thing's supposed to lift. Huh? Leviosa! Can you give me a hand here? Oh, this was already on the ground. This isn't yours. In my experience, for most people, not everyone, but for most people, that's the dangerous way of going about gaining strength because not everybody has uh, tendons made of steel. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, I found that it's better to use conservative rep ranges along with heavy days. I'm not saying to never go heavy, but using five rep sets or four rep sets or six rep sets, you don't have to do it all the time in order to gain that strength that you're looking for in order to shock those fast switch fibers or to stimulate the nervous system. You wanna mix that up. And when you mix it up, not only do you get the nice blend of recovery, but you also get the nice blend of creating that perfect groove and stimulating that nervous system to learn how to fire more muscle than it ever fired before. And so there's a, there's a nice balance between the two that goes on. All right, let's do a little bit of heavier weight today, 295. Haven't done this for a bit, so be a little shaky. I'm just doing a few reps. Make sure my body feels right to it, you know? Actually, not so bad. Actually, feels all right. And yeah, this is a very, very important thing for natural bodybuilders. Now, the other thing that's also important that people underestimate is when you are doing big body movements, such as heavy bent over rows, heavy squats, or deads for some people. I don't do deads, I do Romanian deadlifts, but not deadlifts on the floor. But if you're using weight that is stimulating the overall body, you are going to be stimulating your endocrine system. This does make a difference, and I have tested this over and over again. Like my threshold when it comes down to squats is when I'm squatting four plates or over, I notice that my body shifts. There's something that happens that night and the next day I can feel that something got stimulated. It's almost like uh, based on that intensity, something got stimulated where I get an overall body pump from it. So there are gonna be certain movements that give you an overall body pump. And then when you go to the, your isolation exercises or you go to your other compounds or the smaller lifts, you're gonna notice that you get more results because of that. So adding weight or using certain amounts of weight, there'll be a threshold. And sometimes you need to apply progressive overload until you get to that threshold where that body gets stimulated into growth. Now, it might be a different amount of weight for each person, depending on their technique, depending on how they do things. So I'm not saying four plates for squats is necessary for everybody. I'm just saying that's what I found with my body, with my specific technique and the way I move and, and you know that sort of thing, right? Because I know a lot of you guys don't like the way I move, but the bottom line is that's just the way I move, man. Huh? I'm the only guy that can do like a dance battle and twerk at the same time as squat, huh? But you can't do it. So the mistake I see most people make, or a lot of people make, and I've made the same mistake, that's, that's really how I saw people make it, I saw myself make it, is that they concentrate purely on progressive overload, so much so that they forget to include the endurance work or the hypertrophy work, and they, and they forget to include also 
a variety of different movements because they get too fixated on that one movement where they want to get stronger in and their entire self-worth and value is measured in that movement. Now, I'm not saying not to try to achieve more strength in a certain movement, whether it's bench, whether it's squat or deadlift, whatever, but if you get too fixated on that, you might be not using that overall body stimulation that these movements are giving you in order to get the most gains out of those smaller movements, such as arm curls and, and French press and, and uh, like pullovers or, or whatever it is you're doing, like the isolation movements, right? So when you concentrate too much on progressive overload, sometimes you're not concentrating on strategic range of motion or the isolations. Guess you should have taken my advice, eh, smart ass? Hey, eh? full range my ass. Look what happened here. Hey, you're getting bigger muscles now because of that? Hey, how's that stump looking? Which brings me to my next thing. If you're not using strategic range of motion, using progressive overload, eventually you're just gonna snap something or you're not gonna really stimulate muscles. You're just gonna be constantly bouncing on tendons. So that's why you see some guys that are pretty strong, but they haven't developed a lot of muscle because it's almost like they just have bouncy tendons or they've learned to use momentum in creative ways in order to get the weight up, but they're not necessarily stimulating the muscle. So you have to find out what person you are, what is it that you are doing that is the weak link in your training. That's really my, my emphasis on this. It's not just about strength for the sake of strength itself, but if you're developing a certain way, even though you're getting stronger and you need to develop other areas, well, maybe there's some other strategic ways that you can work out, such as adjusting your range of motion or adjusting your technique on a certain movement in order to isolate that muscle that you feel is not developing. So yeah, progressive overload, is it necessary? Yes, it is necessary because you wanna develop that strength so that way you can move higher amounts of weight for higher rep ranges. But at the same time, you don't wanna to get too focused just always on progressive overload because you might be missing some critical things that'll help you with growth, which is some of those techniques that I talk about on here, such as strategic range of motion and constant tension under stretch, right? If you're just focusing on weight for the sake of weight itself, you know, you might start swinging the weight. You might start changing your technique just to get more weight up. Meanwhile, there might be a technique itself that'll help you stimulate that muscle best. So not only are you getting stronger in that movement, but you're getting stronger with a certain technique, which is going to accentuate how much muscle growth you're getting. So yeah, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded for a couple days because, uh, as you can see, it's been piss and rain for the last two weeks straight. So I got to sit out here with my camera and try to basically, you know, destroy my camera in the rain in order to uh, make a video. So, you know, this is what I do for you guys. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do. So thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get home, just go to naturalgrandbodybuilding.com. And thanks to the Patreon supporters. And take care for now. Mountain. Hello.